What's going on everybody? I wanted to share with you guys some tips on leveling and tactics. Now, to cover all the bases, I would be here for like a thousand hours, okay, because this game is huge. But I can give you some simple things to keep in mind that will help you maximize your XP, and also help make some of the more frustrating elements of the game manageable, especially for those of you that are new to Dragon Age and the mechanics and the combat and the tactics and stuff. All right, so let's get into it. Now, while I'm talking, I'll show you this uh, Fade Rift that uh, I deal with here. It's on Nightmare Difficulty with Friendly Fire Active. And I was like, well, if we're going to talk about combat, I'd, what better than to just show you, all right? So while I'm talking about other stuff, you can watch this. Anyway, um, first and foremost, XP, okay? To maximize your XP in the game, you have these Inquisition perks that are available to you once you have enough reputation from doing stuff like this, okay? Um, closing Fade Rifts, doing little side quests in the world, okay? And they specifically tell you that they will give you extra XP and dialogue options related to a particular subject. History in the Chantry, um, magic, criminal behavior elements, yada yada. Alright, um, the first one I would pick in the game is the one for History in the Chantry, and I'll tell you why. When you first get to Haven, um, there are notes and books and um, all kinds of stuff laying everywhere. They're tacked to the walls, sitting in the houses, laying around the Chantry, down in the Chantry basement, all that stuff, okay? And all those are History and Chantry, chantry related, every single one of them. Um, before reading any of those, what I would do is when you get to Haven, you will have little side quests that you can do once you get to a certain point. It'll show you little white diamonds around the map. Go talk to the blacksmith. Go talk to the alchemist. You'll eventually earn a PowerPoint. That PowerPoint will allow you to unlock the hinterlands on the war map. All right? Go do that and don't read anything in town. Nothing. None of the books. None of the songs. Stay away from the tavern. Um, don't even go in there to listen to anything. Nothing, because listening to a song counts as a codex. A codex in the game is anything that you learn about the game, whether it be a person, place, or thing. And it can be they can be had from picking up an item, walking into a room, talking to somebody, um, through dialogue, reading a book, of course, or a note, any of that, okay? So trying to keep um, yourself away from as many codexes as, as possible until you get a perk that gives you more XP for those codexes, all right? And those history and chantry related codexes are all over Haven. So before getting into any of them, go do stuff like this, earn enough reputation to get an Inquisition perk point, then go back to the war table immediately, go get your uh, your perk for chantry and history related stuff, then run around Haven and read everything, okay? And then go back to exploring the world and every codex you unlock that that relates to history, which is, oh, it seems like just about all of them, okay, it's going to give you 75 to 100 points instead of 50. I mean, that's a major boost in the long run. You're going to see that really add up, and you're going to you're going to level a lot faster, all right? And the next three Inquisition perks I would pick would be the rest of the XP and dialogue bonus categories um, in each one, okay? Like the one for uh, the one for magic, the one for criminal behavior, and the one for politics, okay? Now. When it comes to dialogue, um, this is also a key. The dialogue options um, have a lot to do with the NPCs that you'll find in the world where sometimes you'll you'll go to talk to them and the only thing you can say to them is just goodbye. And you're like, well, what's, what's their purpose anyway? Maybe they'll be part of a quest later. Odds are they're an agent you can recruit. You just don't have the Inquisition perk or the party member um, in your party that you need to have to talk to that person in a particular way. And that dialogue option will usually be in the top left of the dialogue wheel, okay? Um, if you have all those Inquisition perks that give you the dialogue options unlocked, you should be able to talk to just about anybody and recruit a lot of agents. You're not only going to get reputation for recruiting agents, and they may become merchants or um, uh, craftsmen for you later. You never know. All right, But also, those people will help your chief advisors at the war table do missions faster. Things like going and settling disputes in the land, going and investigating cert certain areas. And you will get more followers and all kinds of other stuff from that. All right? Also, from your dialogue, you're going to get codexes if you follow out all the dialogue options. But just be careful. Always follow the left side of the dialogue wheel before the right. If there's an option with a question mark or a star on it, follow that out on the topic you're talking about before you do anything on the right side of the wheel. Because the right side of the wheel traditionally in Mass Effect and Dragon Age games progresses the conversation and you can miss certain topics and special little points and finding favor with your followers and different stuff like that. All right? Also... Uh, not only who you have with you can it dictate who you can talk to at times, but also certain people have personal quests. Like, I just got Vivian. Before I did anything with Vivian, I went and talked to her in the Chantry, went through all her dialogue, and she unlocked this. Finding these books in the land. That's her personal quest. 
If you notice down there in the bottom left above my mini-map, it said Vivian slightly approves. I'm going to develop my relationship with Vivian now each time she's present when I pick up one of her items, right, for her particular class quest. Varric has the Red Lyrium thing, and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so that's maximizing your XP. One way to. I couldn't cover all of them, but that's, that's one chief way that will carry you through the rest of the game because codexes are everywhere. All the time, often. I mean, they're, they're all over the place, okay? Now, for combat, there's two things to know. And to just brutally, overly simplify something that is actually kind of complex. Um, two things. One is the tank system, and the other is cross-class combos. The tank system is have someone who can draw the hate, who can get everyone's attention. Have someone else to keep that person on their feet, because once they draw that attention, they're going to get their ass kicked, of course. And then your DPS dealers should be able to flank in behind the enemies that are worried about your tank and kill them from behind. That's your basic strategy. Work from there. But the tank system. Tank to draw the hate, a mage to keep your tank on on his or her feet, right? And DPS dealers to stab everyone in the back that's worried about your tank, okay? That's your basic combat mechanics, right? Cross-class combos. Um, that comes from older Dragon Age. Um, it's, it's not really mentioned as such. I, I, I haven't seen it here. But essentially what it is is one of your party members specializes in, say, stunning people. Somebody else in your party uh, can exploit... Um, stunned enemies, do extra damage against enemies that are knocked down, enemies that are uh, um, paralyzed, enemies that are frozen solid, whatever the case may be. All right. So anytime you pick a skill in your skill tree, keep the rest of your party in mind. Dragon Age is designed to build your party as one character. You, this is not four different characters. This is one character, individual parts of a whole. If they do not work together and they don't each complement each other, then it's going to fall apart and your party's going to get wiped a lot. Okay. If you don't have someone drawing the hate, then all of a sudden your damage dealers are getting two-shotted by archers. And you're like, what the hell? Why, why, why can't I even live for two seconds? Well, because your tank's not doing his or her job, right? Also, um, not just on the offensive side, but on the defensive side, they introduced a mechanic called guard. Barrier and guard. That kind of replaces healing, in a sense. It's like pre-healing, sort of. It adds an extra bar of health. Your warriors can generate guard for themselves. They can also generate guard and extra defense for players around them. If you have two warriors side by side generating defense for themselves and their allies, they can they have synergy. They can flow with one another. They'll constantly be keeping each other's guard up and keeping each other's defense up to where they're almost unhittable. Get it? All right? And one of those warriors can be doing damage while the other one is focused primarily on drawing the hate. Okay? And then when we get into party behaviors here, I have all of my AI, all of my non-player character um, party members following my character. Not following the controlled character, because each time you switch characters, they're going to be changing targets, and then all of a sudden it's a cluster, okay? No, have all of your AI following your character, and have your character specifically set to follow the controlled character. Everyone else should be following your named character specifically, all right? So they'll always be targeting who you're targeting, specifically your tank, drawing the hate of the person that you're worried about, all right? That seems to work for me, all right? Notice I have Nightmare Friendly Fire here, all right? That's how I like to play. Now, that keeps a lot of the AoE spells um, out of my uh, skill trees because they tend to wipe the party as often as the enemy. But uh, that's how I like to play. It's an added extra challenge. Whatever you do, just make sure your skills complement each other. All right? And you have a tank and you have a mage to keep your tank on his feet. And there you go. And that should carry you through. The comment section below is to carry this conversation to wherever it may go. So please, if you have any questions or anything you want to talk about, man, uh, leave it in the comment section below. If you want to subscribe, hit that button over my head. And for all my videos, click those boxes on the left. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. And I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.